Hi, my name is Stuck, and this is the Hack the Box Pawn Box Special. So recently, the crew over at Hack the Box upgraded their whole platform into a new look and feel. And a part of that, they dropped a really cool feature called Pawn Box, which is a kind of like a virtual appliance for your VPS as such that you can spin up and then instead of just having to dabble with the VPN and getting your own call installed and all that, you can just start it up and get started hacking from any kind of browser that you'll have access to. This is perfect if, the, if you're, let's say you're out and about and you just feel like hacking or if you want to show somebody something else access the system, spin it up, and within a minute or two, you have a full accessible, customized Parrot distribution for you with tools already installed and is curated by the Hack the Box team to work perfectly with their boxes. And you can even add the spectators link to it. So let's say your friends are around and you just send them the link and they can use their phone and, and just watch whatever you're doing. Then you share the link and they will have a really high VNC uh, connection to just be able to partake in whatever you're doing. It's really, really cool. And I figured today that we'll try it out. So let's try and hack a box using Pawn Box. And the easiest way to get access to the new stuff is just to head over to the new UI beta. And uh, when you straight, straight in here, you just push the bell over here. And instead of using your normal VPN, hey, we're doing Pawn Box. Uh, first, we need to select a location. I'm in Sweden, so Germany is going to be close to me. And then I'm going to go for the EU VIP. And we start the pawn box. And within a minute or two, uh, we're going to get access to this system, which is totally cool. So it's just spinning this up and uh, we're going to get access to an instance, instance that's fresh for us. One thing that we need to know is that Every time you terminate it, it's going to remove all the apps that you installed. So, but there is a part called My Apps where you're, you can store your stuff and each time you boot up the system, it's all going to get back again. So if I wanted to get access to this, I would just click open desktop here and hey, here it is. This is my pawn box. Uh, we do have internet access, but they recommend you not to do certain stuff, but that's perfect because we're going to download some tools that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. And also when you uh, terminate it, it's all going to disappear. It's crucial to understand that once your session is done, you kind of need to shut it down because this is only around for, uh, you only have 24 hours a month to run this. So once you're done, shut it down. So first off, we, um, we want to start with prepping it with some of our tools. So I'm going to open up the terminal here. I could either just use this terminal here inside this web interface or I can go back here and says, say that I wanted to open up a SSH session and we get the password from the hack the box system. It's up here. So you just down this one, get the password here. And we have access to the shell here. So we can either just use this one or we can use the one inside this one here. Both work the same way, no biggie. But instead of using the local terminal or the SSH client, we, we just gonna do it web style. So first we need to get some of those tools installed and I wanna speed things up. So I prepared a little bit of a script here. And since I'm copying things from my local computer over to uh, the Hacks Box system, I have this copy thing here and if i paste the stuff that i want to have in here it's just going to enter the clipboard and voila here we go and what we do now is that we're installing hack crawler we're going to install HTTPX, and we're going to install ffuf because those are tools that i usually use and even though this is a predefined web box and the hack the box team has done a lot of cool work with preparing this for their environment I'm not usually using GoBuster, so I, I need to use tools that I'm comfortable with. And while that's installing, we're just going to head over and spin up a box for us to hack on. So let's go and find WriteUp, which is a good web box for us to play around with. And spawn that machine. And in the meantime, we can just check that we have everything installed. So let's do a hack roller. And we can see that it's installed and ready for us. Perfect. Okay, the box is up, so let's just take this box here, copy that IP, open up a browser. 
smash that one in there and see what happens okay and here we go and what we can see here that is that this box says that it has a dos protection so if we were doing some content discovery and trying to find stuff the more 404 that is going to hit and hey if we throw a raft list at it or any other sick list thing it's just gonna um, 404 out and dos us and get us banned so we're not going to do that we're going to play it a little bit safe so normally what i would do is just um i would open up burp here and uh and send the traffic over to burp and see what's going on so let's start with launching the community edition of burp we're doing a temporary project using the defaults and just getting burp up and running. Okay, so we're gonna get into extender and I would love to get me some flow or logger plus plus into this. And we're gonna do logger plus plus for now so we can see whatever kind of traffic that runs through our system. So that's installed. Let's just verify that we're not using scope only because we haven't set a scope yet. And we can head over here then traffic over to burp and this is all preset for us so it's really really easy for us to just play around with it let's remove the interception open up the logger plus plus view and uh and refresh cool so what we could do now normally if this was the pro version we can probably use or older version we can spider from here that doesn't work we can't just create the task for us to crawl the website because this is community edition but a way around that is that we can use hack crawler uh, to crawl the website and find some information for us and then we can pass it over to HTTPX and just proxy it over into burp so let's do that this is an easy way for you to play around with that kind of stuff without having to have a full burp version and we want to do url and then do 10 10 10 1 3 8 and we do depth three because we're going to dig down a bit and uh, see what happens oh there's a couple of pages cool let's do plain so we're able to get that nice and crispy and head it over to httpx and httpx is allowing us to send it over to a proxy we can just use that so httpx minus http proxy 127001 and we'll just smash it in there so this is going to crawl it it's going to head, head it over to http and what's going to happen is that it's going to just populate all the stuff for us inside burp yay we got a crawler now so what you can see here is that we got this write up page and all this stuff is in here cool What's really interesting with this technique is that you can use this for a VPS and then you send things down to your local um, burp box if you're running burp locally. So this writes up, what kind of responses do we have? Immediate, immediately when we look at it, we can see there's a CMS session cookie here. So, okay, it's probably some kind of CMS system and content here says it's CMS made simple. Hmm, all right, what can we do with this? You can start off by seeing if there's any known exploit for it. So let's do that first. So we're going to do search exploit, MS made simple. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Cool. So that means we can probably just go through all this one on one. But since this is not a write up, I'm, I'm just going to show you how this works. So there's a SQL injection here. And this one is the one that's that's busted. So let, let's just play around with that. We're just going to use search exploits to copy, a, make a local copy of this. We do it the kind of the same way. So we do search exploit minus M and the path to the exploit. Boom, we have a local copy now. And if we look at this for six, we'll see that here's the payload. And you can see it's a blind SQL injection there and yeah, blah, blah, blah. But what is interesting is that we need to figure out if there's any additional stuff that we need to add because this Python and payloads usually needs us to fix things so we can see that it's asking for term color here so that's probably going to need to be installed first uh so let's see whatever happens if we just we we'll use python this i get sad right so so let's install pip and so sudo app get install python pip boom here we go okay so we got that up and running okay let's install it and there we go colors in okay perfect so now it's asking us to add the target so let's do that so we use u http 1 10 10 10 1 3 8 and write up 
and that she's kicking off and what it's doing now and that it's brute forcing slowly through the, um, the blind SQL injection to, you know, trying to get the salt, trying to get the username, getting the, the hash and everything about the password. And what is really cool about this is that if I now were to send myself a spectator link, let's say I wanted to copy this here, spectator link, and, and send it over to my iPhone, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna open it up on my phone here. So I can just flip this around and I can now look at whatever goes on inside, um, inside the box. It was really, really cool. So if I'm moving this one around here, yeah, it's, it's moving on my phone as well. So, and you can have a bunch of those. So you just invite people. Okay, so we got the username and password and everything. We're just gonna save these for later. And, but what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna echo and we're gonna combine the password with the salt. Send it over to the hash. We can see it, there it is. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do hashcat method 20 and what we're going to do is we're going to put the hash in and we're going to go for opt useful and um we're going to do, go for a sec list because it sec list is in there it's already prepared for us leaked passwords and do the rock you txt and smash that one away okay we didn't do the force we need to do that and now we can see that it's going to try to brute force it for us see what happens Normally, you shouldn't be recommended to run these on your uh, virtual machines. It's, it's kind of slow, but hey, they kind of beat this uh, puppy up. So it works really, really fast for us. So in a few seconds, we now have the password found and it's Ray KJ 9 So let's do nmap and uh, P minus P. Good T4 for that nice speed. 10, 10, 10, 1, 3, 8. See what happens. The dust V for verbose. And we can say we can see now that we got SSH open. So let's see what we can do with that. SSH. The username we had was JKR, right? So we're gonna do that. 10 10 10 138. And it's open. So we're gonna accept that. We're gonna smash in the password that we copied. And we're in. And as we can see here, here's the user.txt which contains the flag. We're not going to look at that because you need to kind of figure that out for yourself. But this is a way that you can play around with these kind of boxes. And if I was just closing my browser session and opening it up again, I can continue. If I, if I was on a really slow internet connection, you know, it wouldn't be as problematic. I would probably lose connection and get back again. And, it's, and I think it's kind of cool. I really like that it gives you this fully prepared box where you can play around with. What I'm missing though is a little bit of persistence. If, uh, if I, I would be able to install my software and just have it there for let's say the month or for my 24 hours and after those 24 hours, then it should be kind of terminated. But I'm okay with that. You know, a, a quick bash script that's uh, saved in my data can just get the tools that I need installed within a few minutes. And uh, it's a perfect way if you're streaming something or if you're playing around with friends or you know, like you're tutoring and teaching a class, then can you, they can just partake with the spectators link and get a high res resolution on what's going on. And yeah, it's a real, really cool way for anyone to just play around with this uh, without the need of having any deeper skills on how to install a virtual machine. So it's perfect for beginners. It's perfect for people that just want to have a few minutes to play around with stuff, but maybe aren't uh, having their box accessible with them. Or, you know, maybe you're just hanging out with your parents or something and you want to show them some cool hacking. This is a good way to do it. So. I'm uh, huge fan of Palmbox. I think it's, uh, it has good and cool potential. One can simply just hope that Hackcrawler and HTTPX and, and some of the stuff from Project Discovery would end up in the default build. Totally cool. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this quick session on how to use Palmbox and play around with it. Until next time, stay curious. <laughs>